Invoke's user interface is fantastic. In this video, I will show you how to install Invoke and it will be a super easy step-by-step -step tutorial. If you want YouTube to show you more of my content, make sure to subscribe. By the way, my wife told me to stop acting like a flamingo. So I had to put my foot down. All right, today we're gonna do three steps. First, we're gonna install Python, then we're gonna install Visual C++ libraries, and then we're gonna install Invoke. So let's get started with that. All the links are gonna be in the description below. So first we're gonna go to Python here. You can either use 3.9, 3.10, and with the latest version of Invoke, you can actually use 3.11, but I recommend that you use 3.10 for now because then you will be able to use Automatic 11.11 and other user interfaces as well that does not support 3.11. And you can use Command F for Control F, 3.10.6, for example. And then we're scrolling down, we're scrolling down, and at the very bottom, you have, uh, depending on your system, here we have, I'm on Windows, so I'm gonna use the Windows installer 64 bits. This is also available for Mac here. And Invoke is available for Mac, Windows, and Linux as well. Now, when you're installing Python here, it's very important that you check this little box here, add Python 3.10 to path. So make sure you check that, and then just press install now. Super easy, you don't need to do um, anything more with it, just let it run. And we're closing that, and then I'm gonna head over to the Visual C++ libraries. Again, check the description for all the links. And we want the version here that says Visual Studio 2015, 17, 19, and 22. And here you have lots of files. We're gonna take the x64 one here. We're downloading that, and we're opening that file. We're agreeing and we are installing. Setup was successful, it was very quick. And now we can move on to getting Invoke. So here on Invoke's GitHub, we're gonna scroll down to the very bottom. And here you have the current files. You will see the latest version up on here, which is currently 3.0.1. If there's a later version here, just take that. RC2 and RC3, these are release candidates. So those are beta versions. So if you want the latest features, you can take those, but they might have more bugs and be more unstable. So we're just gonna take the regular one here. We're downloading that and just double click that or use your preferred program of choice to unpack the file. And then you're gonna go into that folder and you're gonna see a couple of files here. First, we're gonna press this one, win long paths enabled. We're double clicking that and we're getting a box that says, do you wanna run this? Yes, we do. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes, we do. And the keys have been added. Now you have two files, two install files here. And one is a batch file or a bat file and one is a shell script. If you're on Windows, you're gonna use the batch file. And if you're Mac or Linux, you're gonna use the install shell script. And if you can't see the type here, now I'm on Windows, you can just right click view details. You will see the type here. Now we're pressing the Windows batch file here, which will give us this little box here. And it says, before you start, please make sure to do the following. Install Python, we did that. Double click on the file when long paths enabled, we did that. And we installed the Visual C++ core libraries. And it says, for the best user experience, we should suggest you maximize this window now. So let's do that and press any key to continue. And it's checking Python and initializing the installer. And uh, this will take a minute or two, so just wait. All right, Windows user, before you start, please check this. We did that and we did that. Invoke will be installed here, which is the folder that we unpack the zip in. Would you like to pick a different location? Yes or no? No, we don't want that. And parenthesis here and the N means that that's the default value. So if we just press enter, we're gonna get no. Now you need to make a selection of what type of GPU you have either one for an NVIDIA GPU, two if you do not have a GPU or CPU, or three if you have no idea. Since I know I have an NVIDIA GPU, I'm gonna press one here. And now you can just sit back and wait as the installation continues. Now don't be alarmed because you don't see the AMD option here. You're gonna have to go to Invoke's install manual on their web page to check how to install the ROCKM drivers for AMD. After a while, you're gonna see this screen and you're gonna get some options here. You can use the tab or the keyboard here to go through the options. 
If you have a low VRAM on your GPU, I recommend that you enable free GPU memory after each generation. Just gonna press space here, enable X former support is by default, we want that. And you can also force CPU to be used on GPU systems if you don't want to use uh, your uh, graphics card. This is gonna be super slow, so we don't want that in general. Floating point precision, you can use auto. And if you wanna use, this is a more advanced feature, size of the RAM cache used with fast model switching. If you wanna use multiple models and you wanna be able to switch quickly between them, you can increase the cache here of your RAM that the models will be loaded into. I'm just gonna leave this default for now. You can also change the directors here where first your images will be, and the second one here is for all the models. So Invoke uses one folder for every model, whether it they be Stable Fusion models, Control Net models, LoRa's, everything's gonna be in this auto import. And you're just gonna go down and accept the license here. Now, we didn't mention this access token up here. If you have a Hugging Face account, you can go into this link and copy paste your token here if you want. So this is optional and more for advanced users. We're just gonna skip that for now. I'm gonna go next. Here you can select some of the models that you would want. If you're just starting out, I recommend that you try the deliberate model, for example. And we're just using the key, the arrows here on the keyboard and then the space. And we're gonna skip the 2.1 model and we're gonna skip the 1.5 and we're gonna add the SDXL base one and the X SDXL refiner one. And this will give you a great starting point for stable fusion. We're gonna use the deliberate model, which is a 1.5 model as a great base for 1.5 and then Stable Fusion XL 1.0 as your second one. We're also gonna go up here and we're gonna go check Control Net here and make sure that you have Canny, Depth, you have the Line Art, the Open Pose. So those are default. I'm also gonna add in the Tile. So that's gonna be great for 8K upscaling and stuff like that. You can check my video on doing that. So you can do like 8K images even on a low VRAM computer. Then we're gonna go down and apply changes and exit. And now the installation will continue with the settings that we chose. So just wait for all the models to be downloaded. Now this is finished and it says Invoke AI installation successful. So you can close this down and just press any key here and then open the folder where you installed Invoke AI and just open this batch file here. Here you will have a lot of options, but what you wanna do is generate images with the browser-based interface. You're just gonna press one or enter here, which will start Invoke for you. Now you can see down here, it says application startup complete, and it's running at this link here. So you're just gonna copy paste that, and you're gonna open a new browser window, put that in, and here you have it. Invoke AI. You have your positive prompt up here. This is what you want in the image. Your negative prompt, this is what you don't want. And then you're gonna press Invoke to generate your image. You need to select a model here from the ones that we downloaded, the deliberate, for example, and uh, off you go. If you need a more detailed guide on how Invoke works, check out this video right here. As always, have a good one. See ya.